Okay, welcome to Leaks 101. This is going to be a collaboration effort because we're all Team mediocre at this. But together, we should be good at them, right? <laughs> okay. Maybe. Maybe. We've all done a little bit of everything. So, you want to say your pun out loud? How to completely point out. Ah! That's when you all laugh. Yeah. Laugh. <laughs> You are. Okay, so we got. <laughs> Wait. Oh, this is getting off to a great start. Okay, I can't see it because usually I'd look on there, but so there. I mean, this is all kind of detailed later in slides in more detail. I'm pretty sure, but um, there are two different kinds of wigs. There is lace front and there are hard fronts. You're mostly gonna be dealing with hard front wigs, which are this is a hard front wig. All the wigs I have here are hard front wigs. They are like. Yeah, it's like that one. I don't know how to explain it. The difference between them and lace front is lace front, um, they come with, as you can kind of see in the picture on the right there, a nice little piece of lace that you can then trim or add hair to to make whatever hairline you want to make. Um, they're a lot more difficult to work with, um, and they're a lot more expensive. Like, we're talking like $100 for a lace yeah, front. Yeah, we're talking like this is $100 and that might be $30. But um, if you're like going for like a very specific like hairline, like this would definitely be like Raven from the Teen Titans. Like if you're going for something like that, you probably <laughs> want to go for a lace front wig. But again, a lot more expensive. Um, we also have specialty wigs, which um, a lot of like big stores they'll sell separate wigs that are specially like already put into ponytails for you. Um, that will usually just have ponytail clips. Or they'll be um, waxed in different ways, or they'll just be like different, like they'll be like faded colors. There are also wigs that just are for a certain character. Like if you type in, give me a character. I Rainbow I Dash. A, I have a wig that yes. is specifically for Go Go Toronto oh, from Big Hero Six. I have a wig here that I literally went onto Amazon and I typed in Shihiro Fujisaki from Dog and Rampa, and I got the wig. And I didn't have to do any styling. It looks pretty good, I think, um, and sometimes you'll just find those wigs, and they'll usually be a little more expensive than if you like bought it and styled it yourself, but also then you don't have to style it yourself usually. Um, and then there are lots of different types of fibers, which I think is also covered later. I think all this is covered later. But um, so they'll, depending on what kind of wig you get, you have to check your fiber type before you do like any, like any styling on it, because some will melt. Some are made out of better things, they won't melt. Um, most of the more high-end wigs like Arda, Epic Cosplay will have wigs that are made out of the type of fibers that you can curl, do whatever you want with. But when it comes to heat resistance, some wigs will melt. They, wigs are plastic unless you get human hair wigs, which are very expensive. And if you ever get a human hair wig, why? <laughs> I mean, they look very realistic, but also they're and very expensive. And then wig caps. We've got this is also I think was mentioned more later, but we have two different kinds of main like two main types of wig caps. There's the nylon versus the mesh. Everyone can find out what's best for them. Um, I prefer the mesh and I think most people prefer the mesh because the difference between the nylon ones, nylon ones probably which you've used if you've ever gotten like a Halloween wig cap. It has one opening, it's like a really tight hat and you just gotta pull all your hair up on the top of your head and pull it over. The mesh ones, I didn't bring one for some reason, but they have two openings. Aha! Would you like to demonstrate how to put a mesh wig cap on? Sure. It's a fun time. It's really it's easy. Cap. You don't have to do any prep work. No screw. Usually what I, I do mean, is I put my hair in a ponytail, not like a low one, and then I'll usually flip my hair up forward, and then I take the bigger end, which usually has like a like a line edge to it, and then I just like put my hair over and slide it over and tuck the hair back in. Mm -hmm. like that. And then what I do with mine is I literally like just take the whole wig cap and put it around my neck and then yeah. like take out my hair and then woof it over my face and then everything just gets tied up real nice and you scare it with a bobby pin and all your hair is up. Um, yeah, I find it a lot easier. The one issue with them is that, like, if you get, if you stretch them out a lot, or if you get a hole in it, there's a hole in your wig cap, and they're a lot easier to, like, get holes in, because there are literally holes. 
Um, <laughs> mesh works nicely with long, like, thick hair, because then you can stick, like, lots of bobby pins through the cap, like, into your hair to secure it, whereas nylon is generally, like, easier to do with short hair, because you obviously don't have enough, like, a ton of hair to put bobby pins into anyway. And I'm going to suggest that, I mean, this isn't a suggestion, this is more of me saying, please, um, even if you have short hair, use a wig cap, because, like, you can see your hair. And like there always will be like sideburns or like little wispies that are gonna come out, but like unless you're bald, unless you're bald, unless you're bald or have a buzz cut like all the way over, like there there's not really a reason for you not to off. use a wig cap. Most of them come with wig caps when you buy wigs online, so just use it. It's useful. Okay, this slide is um we're gonna have some emotions. We slide. have some emotions to share. So there's like the cheaper end wigs, which I qualify as kind of like twenty dollars or less, kind of almost, or maybe twenty five or less. The ones you see in in the store right now. Yes, the Halloween wigs, <laughs> Halloween quality wigs are extremely shiny. Boy, oh boy, do they reflect light. Um, they are really thin, so like if you have dark hair, it's very easy to see through. Like if you part your hair, like the wig hair at all, you'll probably end up seeing your hair. Um, the mesh cap is not great quality, <laughs> it's, it's just not good. Um, not, they're not heat resistant, they will melt if you try to use a straightener or a curling iron. They just, they fall apart. Um, and they're often like really soft and slippery, but so they're like untangle pretty easily, but other than that there's not like a ton of upsides to them. The quality wigs will usually have a lot more hair, so you won't be able to see your own hair through it. <coughs> the wig cap and everything. Um, the lace cap is a lot nicer because it holds your hair a lot better. And generally, if you want to add wefts to it, it's a lot easier than trying to add it to a mesh cap. Uh, there's way more colors, and they blend better, so they look more natural if you're going for a natural hair color. Uh, the the cap size is adjustable. It's not one size fits all. You can actually like, like, it's not just one size. You there's little buckles on the sides near your ears, and then you can like make it smaller for yourself. Um, and they actually curl and can be straightened and don't melt on contact. Uh, cheap wigs you usually buy from Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, Light in the Box, and other like <laughs> random sellers. But I would say don't underestimate the quality that you can get from them because some of them, if you do enough looking into them, can actually be really good. I have a couple of wigs from AliExpress that are really nice and I only spent like $10, $15 on them. But there are wigs out there that are really shit. You just have to know what to look for. You have to know what to look for. You have to look through all the details and all the specs and whatnot. Yes. Oh, am I rant, or do you want to finish this? You can do your rant. Okay, so hi. I'm going to tell you about Amazon wigs. Um, oh, dear. Because I personally buy a majority of my wigs from Amazon, which I'm not suggesting you do, but also I am. If you, <laughs> okay. if you broke, which if you I know you are. If you don't want to spend $30 on an art wig, which, like, if you want to, I support you. They're great. I have one up here. We can look at them all later. Art wigs are nice. They're really thick. They don't tangle very easily. They take styling really they nicely. They take styling really well. They usually come, they are very nice. They come with wig caps. They look really nice on the inside. And I love them. They're great, but they're also very expensive. So if you guys ever are looking for a wig and you don't know if you want a cheaper option, you can always ask me or ask one of us. Probably ask me though. Because um, <laughs> I do buy most of my wigs off of Amazon. Um, there's this really good, um, company I think they are, I don't know what they are. It's a very good company on Amazon, they're called Map of Beauty. Um, they sell a lot of different wigs in like, the, I mean, this one's from Map of Beauty. Um, the other one I have here is from Map of Beauty. And they sell like basic styles in like a lot of different colors and then you just have to style it yourself. The one downside to them is they are really thin. I mean, some of them are really thin. Like this one is really thin. So sometimes you might have to add wefts but that is like, this is like a $12 wig, and then I have to buy $10 less, which is still change, say it's gonna be like $10. And also they usually have Amazon Prime shipping or free shipping, so um, definitely the shorter wigs from Mappa Beauty are gonna be a lot more thicker than the, the longer ones, but, and the longer ones do tangle pretty easily, but 
I, I just suggest If you're them. taking good care of them, that should really be a huge factor. And I love this wig, okay? You I want it so much. <laughs> you're more expensive wigs, but generally they are like really nice and full and they take heat really well and you can style them over and over and over again. Uh, come from Arda, Wiggis Fashion, Epic Cosplay Wigs, and Rockstar Wigs. But there are other sites out there. Um, they just, they're really nice. I, if you're looking at AliExpress though, I got you. I buy so many wigs from there. I love them. Um, but I also <laughs> know what to look for, so. And in the end, reviews. Don't buy something that doesn't have reviews. It, yeah. It's like from Amazon or eBay. But it has good reviews. Read the reviews. You have eyes. You can read, hopefully. And the people there know what they're talking about. Like, they, yeah. Also, reviews often will have pictures in them. So you can get a good idea of what um, the product actually looks like before you buy it. Like not just in the display pictures, which are often edited. Yeah. Okay. Wigs are not <laughs> real hair. Um, so Unless you're getting a real hair wig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, so you do kind of need to treat them differently than you would treat your actual hair. Um, and that can also mean you can use a lot more in it. Like, I wouldn't go and put glue in my hair, but with a wig, that's something you could do. Like, if you have a really outrageous hairstyle and you think glue is the only way that's going to make it possible, you can do that because yeah. it's not your real hair. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, like it says there, you can do cock, foam, glue, yarn, um, etc., etc. You can like really slather it um, with like spiking glue, stuff like that. Um, I think Holly has some here, yeah. yeah. That really stuff icky. is really nice, feels really icky. I wouldn't want it in my real hair, but it works nice for her. I did it in my real hair. I did it more than me. It was awful. I, yeah, my, my <laughs> first ever cosplay, I did Elle from Death Note, and I. I'm naturally short hair. Like I just always cut my hair short, and it was the perfect length to just spike it oh, myself no. instead of buying a wig. So instead of buying a fifteen dollar wig, I bought five dollars worth of uh, hair gel and I spiked the shit out of it. It's and it worked really well, but washing it out was a challenge. There's got to be stuff will make your hair feel like rocks, yes. but it will make it stay. It, it's beautiful. <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. Sure. Um, and heat matters. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, said so, um, you can add volume. So like, if your character has a ponytail and then it comes, it like spreads out like the anime hair where you have like, you know, a small ponytail and then when you like look at the back, it's like a giant bush. Um, you can actually like um, fill the inside with like foam or something, and then you can just put hair on you the can outside. Build a bush. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I don't know how people get real hair like that. Like how how and how and like people animate these things and think that people will actually have this. Hair. They don't. Yeah, you can. Hey, Yu-Gi-Oh. Anime hair. <laughs> anime hair. Like yeah, Ace Attorney. Oh my God, those spikes. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but heat. So some wigs actually are heat resistant. Again, you need to like check the like specs and everything when you're buying a wig. Whatever. You need to check um, and see if it says it's heat resistant and then to like what degree. Um, so like the map of beauty wigs Holly was telling you about and I think art wigs are as well heat resistant. Yes. Um, I wouldn't bring well, them not the silky ones. I wouldn't bring like a really hot curling iron to one of these wigs, but I would bring a curling iron to it. Yeah. Like I, I definitely, um, something I really like to do is um, like I cosplay Seven from Mystic Messenger, and he's just got really floofy hair. So, um, oh, okay. Well, there's a technique later that I guess is coming, but it involves a hair dryer. So, yeah, um, washing and care. I've never okay, Alex. I didn't think you, you had. Did it. You're disgusting. <laughs> so, um, like everything else, washing your hair, your real hair, versus washing your wig is a little different, but actually, depending on what technique you do, it actually might not be as different as you think it is. So the way I like to wash my wigs... It's and covered in here, too. Oh, it is? It is. Okay. Wow. Well, we're I'm the only on one that this previewed power this whole power. I did. Poorly made. It was poorly made. Um, well, so there are different <laughs> techniques, and honestly, there's like 
so many different ways to wash your wigs. Find the way you like the best. I've done two different techniques. One involves soaking it in fabric softener for three days. That was a weird one. It smelled really weird afterwards. <laughs> and I never used that wig really after that. It is? Don't do that. Unless you really need it. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> tools. Um, yeah. Tools. There's a lot you can use. There's special wig brushes um, that are brush. designed to kind of help you brush out tangles. Without um, taking all of the hair out. Yeah, I usually, when I brush, like hold the cap and the wig and then go for it. Um, we also yeah. have wig detangler spray. I don't know how well it actually works, but it makes me feel better. <laughs> um, I have two bottles, I swear by it. It's just basically smelly water in a bottle, but you know. <laughs> I don't know what it actually does, but I think it helps. <laughs> it's cheap. Go for it. Go on. Look at Wash it. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Oh. Hi. Um, so the way I, and this is actually how I do it, basically. So the way I wash wigs is um, I'll fill up, a, I used to fill up a bucket, but then I found that was annoying and I could just fill up a sink. So I'll just fill up like a sink, like clog it, or like, <laughs> you know, whatever. I'll fill up the sink with warm water, not hot water. I guess you could use cold water, but I wouldn't suggest it. Um, just warm water. We don't want to melt our wigs in the water. Um, and then just use whatever shampoo you use for yourself. Like, you're going to put some shampoo, you're going to swish it around. And then I also like to put a little conditioner in it and swish it around. And then you're going to want to rinse it real well because, like, it's you want to get the shampoo out. You don't want it stay staying in there. And then you're going to want to hang it to dry. I mean, you can dry it on, I guess, a table, but it will take a lot longer. I like to, like, I have hooks on the wall, like, take my, throw my robe off the hook and, like, put the wig up and let it drip dry. Make sure you put, like, something underneath it or your floor is going to be real wet. And you don't really have to be super worried about being a little rough with the wig. Um, it will retain, as long as you don't use super hot water, it should retain its shape that it had when you started washing it. Um, and also, please, for the love of God, do not brush your wig while it is wet. Let it dry and then brush it. Because it's just, it's not going to work in your favor. <laughs> just wait for it to dry. It's not that big of a deal. It's going to get brushed out eventually. As long as you don't touch it, it shouldn't get any worse than it is when it comes out of the water. Um, I guess I can just take brushing. So, then for brushing it, um, you're gonna really, like, don't use any, like, I mean, you can use, like, normal brushes or, like, really fine tooth coats, but, like, it's suggested against because wigs, they're not your normal hair and they're not connected to a head. Um, they don't so grow back. It will just, <laughs> they don't grow back, so it will just tear out. I really, like, when I first started cosplay, like, six years ago, I went to the dollar store and I bought a huge pack of just, like, these, like, combs. You get a bunch of them in one pack for a dollar, and I just use these kinds, like, these tooth combs. And then I have my wig brush, but honestly, I use these more than I use this. This is for, like, when I just need to go ham on it. This is when I want to, like, make it look nice and pretty. Um... And you're just going to want to work with the wig. Like, you don't want to, like, be super rough with it because your hair, it won't grow back. And if it, you tear it out, you tear a trunk out, and that, there, there goes your hair. Now you have a bald spot. Now you have a bald spot. Um, yeah, you want to avoid using the same product you used to brush your hair, to, the same brush you used to brush your hair to brush your wig. Just, there's oil in your there's hair. There's oil, there's... You don't know what. There might be hair dye, and you just want to brush your, like, dye your hair. It's not that hard to buy, like, an extra one. Yeah, be gentle with it, and then do, like, little sections at a time. If you have to, like, section it off with pins or, like, hair clips or something, just work it one section at a time, and then set it aside when you're done with it. The, you might have to do some untangling games. You just want to be as gentle with the wig as possible, because they're expensive if you, like, they're expensive, and you, yeah, it's not like you're, it's, you can't go it back for free. <laughs> Woo, detangling, that follows the same thing. Just work in small sections. Um, if you need to like tie off other hair, do it. Cause then just start at the bottom, work your way up. Uh, just, cause otherwise you just pull out chunks of hair. And I think the whole motto of this entire 
slideshow is going to be, your wig doesn't grow back. So just be careful with it. Um, you can use detangling spray. Uh, big, that's, you don't have to, or you can make your own. Um, hair, like normal hair, wigs also get frizzy. You can use a flat iron, just use a flat iron to do it. Uh, be careful, again, check the resistance, the heat resistance of your wig, so you don't just melt it together. <laughs> um, and then when you're storing any long, medium to long wig, you don't want to just like stuff it in a bag, because that's how you get tangles, and then you have to untangle it every single time, and it's a mistake. Don't do it. Uh, braid or ponytail it. Make it, not, like, make it, do as much work as you can before you put it in the bag, so you don't have to do as much work after you take it out of the bag. Um, but if it's, like, really fancy, like the wigs that are up there, just leave it out of the bag. Don't put it in a bag. Like, heads are, like, $4. They are. They're really cheap. Just get one. <laughs> you, my dad made me to stand for, like, $2, like, you know. It's, they're it's fun cool. to have around, too. Like, they're, they're fun. For Holly, because I don't do this to mine. Oh yeah, I paint mine. To paint and give them eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they sit in the corner of the room and watch you. This is completely off topic. I just like noticed the googly eyes on mine. <laughs> notice how the wig stand is very like blackened and looks like something dripped on it. So I, I we don't talk about this, but I acrylic washed a wig to make it darker, and so now I have a wig head that just has. Black dripping down its face. It has a face, so. and then it just has paint all over it. <laughs> it's terrifying. But also, it's just fun to have around the house. You know, when people come to view your apartment, and then you just have them, and they're like, "Wow, these faces are staring at me. What do you do?" <laughs> well, then we get to play. You used to use my brother's room as my storage room for all my cosplay when he moved out to go to college, and so I pull the wigs. Um, with the dresser, and whenever we had guests come over and stay, I would go in the next day and they'd all be turned away or put in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I have faceless ones that sit on the top shelf of my closet, so every time I open the door, they stare down at me. Um, it's great. You get yourself some wig heads. <laughs> uh, I think you can do this. Okay, I'll try. I, think think you I don't know a whole lot. Let's go, Jess. It. Okay. Um, so tools, the basics, we kind of already went over that. So you've got a couple of different types of combs. I don't have a wide tooth, but I have a fine tooth. We have a fine tooth, we've got um, this guy. <laughs> the wig brush. Yeah, so if you're styling elaborate style, uh, hair gel is going to be your friend, bobby pins, hair ties. Um, again, I cannot like, recommend the brand got to be enough. It will not move. They won't, they yeah. don't move. Like yeah, when, they say, really when they say glued nice. and ultra glue, <laughs> It's basically hair glue. Yeah, uh, that's like, oh, geez. Well, that's what dancers peace. use when they go on stage and they want their like hair to stay nice through like whatever they're doing on stage. That's what dancers use. It does not come mm -hmm. off. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't like nice. undo itself. It's some bobby pins, dollar store. Dollar store for 72. Um, you're also probably gonna want a wig head, especially if you're doing some more elaborate styling. Um, I think it's just easier. Sometimes I style my wig on my head or even cut it on my head. Would not recommend. Um, also, so you recommend against spraying it while it's on your head? Yeah. Um, and then we kind of talked about this earlier, but you need to research first, but then some wigs are enough heat resistant that you can use flat irons, curlers. So, like, again, some of the same tools that you're using on your real hair. But just be careful. Remember, those oils can transfer. Um, it would be much less prone to do so if you were using like a straightener or a curler. But again, don't use the same brush that you use for your hair on your wig. Um, teasing brush. So um, I don't have one of those. <laughs> I mean, you really don't need a special brush to, brush to tease. Basically, I don't know. Is teasing kind of? I don't think so. No, we don't have any. Um, basically, to tease, what I do with my own hair, and it would work fine with a wig, is you just lift a small section, spray some hairspray, and then you just want a back comb. So you would use a similar one, um, a fine tooth comb would probably work best, but you're just going to back comb, and it kind of rats the hair. Um, yeah, teasing would be hard to untangle though, so do it. If you're going to do it, do it with caution. Get it right the first time. Practice. Um, get a yeah. wig from Amazon. Get an eBay wig. Get a cheap wig and practice. Get your old wig. You don't want any more, like this one. 
Um, and we're gonna talk about um, cutting wigs in a little bit, but some things to help with that would be spinning shears, a razor comb, um, and if you need to thicken up your wig, you're gonna need extra wefts. And like Linda was saying, if you want that awful anime hair look, you might need to consider things like wire and foam and stuff like that. And also, um, they mentioned wig head stands, so like, yeah, my dad made this one, but if you don't have a father to make you wig stands, or anyone to make you wig stands, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a beautiful one, but you Oh my um, god, holy. You yeah, can bring buy back my daddy issues. You can buy a wig stand <laughs> on Amazon, or any, like, you can buy them off Arda, I think, too, and there is, that's the picture, that's what they look like. I will say if you do that, you're gonna wanna make sure your wig head has a hole in the bottom because some of them don't. Most of them do, but like, the great alternative is to just tape it to the table. Yeah. I don't have a wig head stand, I just tape mine to the table. And also we don't mention this, but like, you wanna put a pin in your wig so it doesn't slide off. <laughs> Otherwise it will like come off the moment you try and comb it. AKA so when I try to style a wig on a gumball machine, that's fun. Wigheads can also double as pin cushions. <laughs> I had a gumball machine at home, and I didn't have a wig head, so I just used the gumball machine. Well, I put um, on lamps, bottles. Yeah, I've done that on lamps. That work, it works. You do what you can with what you have. Do what you got to do. So, trimming. Oh yeah, I'm really bad at cutting wigs, guys. But I know the technique, I'm just bad at it. So, when you're cutting things, you're going to want to cut vertically. Like just this way if you don't know. Not horizontally. Unless you are going for like that ch chunky blunt like like blunt bangs. Unless you're going for that look, you're gonna wanna cut horizontally. I mean vertically. Um, <laughs> or if you have to cut off like a major section of hair, like I don't know if I'm actually gonna demonstrate this later, because I was going to, but now I don't know. I don't have any way to clean up afterwards. I wanna cut this week shorter, but I want to make it like this short, so I'm not going to like cut vertically the whole time. I would probably cut off a decent section of it and then go in and clean it up and make it look nice and pretty because otherwise you're going to be there for a while. Um, you're going to want to either start a pair of scissors. I wouldn't suggest my technique, but I just use my thread scissors more often than not. Um, they work, they're sharp. Um, you're, you're probably going to want a smaller pair of scissors too, you're not going to want to cut with like a huge like sewing scissors or like, like a big scissors you would use to like cut paper. Um, <coughs> and then there's also this thing called razor combs, I personally don't have one and I really should get one. Um, maybe this is why I'm bad at it. There are these things, these in the lower left corner, they and they'll have their combs with little razors in between them. They'll give you a nice, good finish, and like, will make it look more natural rather than just like, hey, I took a pair of safety scissors to my wig. What do you mean by cut vertically? As so, so like, you're oh, let's like, cut a little yeah, bit. Just, oh, no, because I'm gonna cut this eventually. So I would like instead of like going like this, I would go like cut with the hair, kind of like that. Oh, so like, like a like, like a very shallow angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we have some hair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can use regular scissors, um, maybe not for the fine detail work, but like you can use it to like get a lot of hair off at once, um, and yeah, but I said blunt cut for a lot of your hair, and then feather yeah. it <laughs> when you're done, because otherwise you're going to be sitting there for a while trying to get it to the length you want. And for the love of God, don't use fabric scissors. And make sure you, tr you make sure you try it on before you do it. If you feel confident in cutting it with it on, or if you feel confident that your friend can cut it with it on, um, you can do that. So it's just like you know how long it's gonna be on you. You can probably, I would suggest against cutting the back of it with it on by yourself, but you probably can. You can do the bangs with. It on, and I kind of suggest that you do the bangs with it on if you feel confident in knowing where your hand is because I don't really. So, <laughs> and also because wig, my face. wig, uh, wig heads will not always equal the size of your yeah, head. They don't, these are she's got a very small head. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs>
Yeah, we anime. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, gravity defying shit. Um, Ew. Yeah, you want to spike in very small sections at a time. Um, most of the time, you want to work from the top of your way down so you know exactly how big you're making your spikes so you don't like fuck up near the bottom and are like, shit, I don't have enough hair for the top spikes. Um, bobby pins and hair ties are your best friend for this to mark off. Uh, how much hair you're putting in your spikes, where you want them. Uh, you want to use your best friends, hairspray, and some good heat. It's getting hot in here, guys. <laughs> um, and also, hair gel. Woot woot. <laughs> They're your best friends when it comes to spiking stuff. <laughs> the are you okay, heat, Whitney? No. Um, is because wigs are plastic and they are made in a certain way and unless you heat it up it probably won't retain the it. shapes um, because if you heat up the plastic and then move it you're changing the shape that it was like melted into originally which is pretty cool so you can make whatever you want as long as it's warm oh the may require support is like if you have super big spike like uh, like Yugi basically Moto. any Yu-Gi-Oh character with really big <laughs> spikes are probably going to like require you to use wire, foam, some combination of the two to get you them real big spikes that uh, straight up defy gravity. Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, Dragon Ball. Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. Remember, it's not your real hair, so it's you can do whatever you want to Do what to you it. need to. <laughs> oh god. Ooh, I've got my support. Yeah, you please do this. I have wefts <laughs> with me, actually. So these are wefts. Um, don't pay attention to how bad this look. Um, these are wefts. Um, so, <laughs> wefts are used when you get a thin wig or you need, you get a thin wig and you need to add more hair to it to cover up bald spots, when you need to do any sort of extreme styling. So if I like wanted to put this wig into a ponytail even, I would have to get wefts. Because I pull this up and suddenly like there's no hair down here. Or there's like no hair underneath, so you would have to get wefts to, like, to do any like big styling. Any, if you're gonna go for like major spikes, you're probably gonna have to get wefts. Um, if you want to just thicken a wig, you want to make it really give it that anime poof. Um, or if you want to add more colors, or like you know, just to, for fun. I don't know. You need to add any pieces or anything. Um, so the way you're gonna add wefts is you're going. Basically what they are is they're just long pieces of hair um, that come on these little rows and you're going to just have to sew them in by hand. Um, you're going to cut them to the desired length you want, you'll pin it, and then you're going to literally, you're going to get, I'm trying to explain this, it's hard. <laughs> There's a lot of tutorials online if I can't explain it well enough for you today. But basically for wigs, I'll do this one because this is probably a better example. Um, they come in these rows. So you're gonna just add more of these rows. You will probably have to sew it. You can either sew it like they have it here, just onto these things, or you can just sew it straight onto the other rows that are already there if you wanna make it thicker. Um, you're literally gonna flip it up. You're gonna find where you wanna sew your row. Like you'll, find, you'll see there are holes. You're gonna find where you wanna sew your, hole, your row and you're just gonna go for it. Um, you have to do with hand. You want I don't know how to explain it, guys. You, no, no, you, no, you said so your own. I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, gonna, uh, okay. Yeah. Be sure not to cut the lefts. Um. Wait, what? I don't know. If that you're means. getting, if you're getting hit up something. Oh, if you're getting, I don't know why you do that. <laughs> or, um, yeah, you're going to want to use matching thread to either the hair or the wig netting just so there's not like this suddenly this like black patch here and everyone's like, oh, what? Oh, is it like a standard color scheme for like trying to get the colors of one wig to match like a wet? So, that's a very good question. So for Arda wigs, um, they have every color that their wigs come in, they have wefts for, they have them in short and long, and let me just tell you, these are the short ones, <laughs> so the long ones are very long, 
Um, the point is they're anticipating you're going to cut them. They're so anticipating like, you're going to cut them or add wax to them. However, if you buy something off of Amazon or you buy something off of like Epic Cosplay and you're like, oh crap, I need wax. We, as a club, have a color ring in our office. So you can come and visit us in our office hours or you can ask us and we'll like bring it to club. And basically we have an Arda color ring. So whenever they come out with new colors, they send us more. And basically what it is, is it's just a ring of like little wefts of hair and they have the code on them so you can like go on their website and see what like match the code to the color that they have. And then you can buy the, the color that matches the closest to the wig you have. Um, which I use it for. It's really pretty. If you don't have anything to look for, you can just come and look at it. It's like gorgeous and there's so many colors. And I just like to comb it with my hands sometimes. It's really fun to play with. <laughs> and um, so yeah, if you ever need a, a weft but you don't know what color you're going to need, or even if you're like getting a wig for a cosplay and you're not sure, if you don't trust the computer, you don't, you're not sure what color you want, come and look at our Arter Ring. We've got so many pretty colors on it, guys. You want me to explain this? Yeah, do you know how to do? I sorta, yeah. So, <laughs> that's, that's the mood for today. <laughs> it's that fluffy shit you got in the back of those two hairstyles. It's not these notorious thing touch, but um, basically what you're gonna end up doing is back combing the back bits of the hair, which will bunch up and like tangle and basically give volume to the back part. And then you're gonna like slowly smooth it out to the desired length and do whatever kind of like spraying and gelling that you need to to get the shape you want out of that. Um, you'd either do it in lots of small spikes like Sasuke has, or one big spike. I don't know if she even knows which one that is. Lapis. Lapis does. My blue girl. <laughs> <laughs> so you either do it in one big giant back comb or lots of little back combs. Um, if you need a really, really big duck butt, you probably also need foam to like wrap around. I think there's a picture of it in the next. Sort of. Yeah, so Pearl also has a duck butt, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I don't know, I don't watch. But yeah, you would still back comb the whole big piece, and then anything on the outside of your back comb, like the whatever is giving it volume, or if you have foam, you would basically smooth that bit back out and gel it or however you would like to affix it. It's your turn. Yes! <laughs> I know how to do this, guys! Okay, so this is what I started talking about earlier. Um, something that I really like to do, because I crossplay a lot, um, and have a lot of short hair. What? Yeah. Twice? Okay. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> anyway, um, I've had to get a lot of short wigs. There. Um, and to fluff them up, I really like to use a hair dryer. So first of all, um, you want to make sure you pin the wig to the wig head <laughs> because this technique involves flipping your wig upside down. And I think it works best if you do this on a wig head. Um, so not just one pin, but many, many, many pins in the wig head. Um, and basically, so, like Holly was saying, it's plastic, and so if you heat up that plastic and put it in a new shape, it's going to keep that shape once it cools. Um, so basically, you're going to take your wig head, flip it upside down, and just kind of use the hair dryer, and it'll floof it up, kind of like, um, I don't know, girls, if you blow dry your hair that way, basically you're flipping it under, and then blow drying, just like this, but with your wig. So it goes from like this to this. Um, and you can do as much as you need. Sometimes hairspray helps to set it. Um, you can fluff it with your fingers. I wouldn't use a brush on it after that because um, it's going to maybe kind of take out some of the fluff. Um, and sometimes you can set it with gel. Like you really, really need those like big fluffs to stay. But it's kind of a way of um, getting a fluffier style without needing to really put a lot of gel in there. What's this? Oh, I know how to do this. I have a home stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is the call up close. Um, 
So, again, wigs aren't normal hair, and sometimes attaching things are a little more difficult, sometimes they're easier. So, let's say you have to attach, like, some horns, or, you know, <laughs> or some bows or ears. Um, there's, like, a lot of different ways you can do this, and everyone finds their own good way to do it, and there's, like, yeah, you just try something until you find what you want. So, personally, the thing I like to do is the, head the, the headband with the screw technique. Um, where you literally just get a headband, you drill or poke a hole through it, and you put a screw into, this works well for like, anything made out of like, clay, especially like, like, model magic, like, more pliable clay, that you can then just drill the screw into the horn, and then, horn, you know, whatever it is, and then just put it on your head. Um, <laughs> so that's the, the supply screw. Ah! And headbands, um, yeah, that looks good for anything lighter, especially anything that, like, I wouldn't really use it for, like, a bow, but if you have to put any antlers or horns or, like, ears that are, like, not, that can't just be sewn in, um, that's a good way to do it. Alligator clips, if you guys don't know what alligator clips are, which I'm supposed to think some of you don't, um, they're the best thing in the world. No. Um, so I have, there are lots of different kind of clips and some of them are gonna work a lot better than some of the other ones. So these clips are cheap, but they're gonna slide out. I'm sorry, it's true. They are just, I don't know what they're called, but they, they're flat, they don't have any grooves. They'll work for some things, like if you have to put like a really small bow in it will work, but anything bigger or heavier, you're not gonna want to do this. This is an alligator clip. It's got these little grooves in it. You can get them in a lot bigger, and I suggest if you're gonna put like a big bow or anything big in, you get them in a lot bigger, but the little ones work for smaller things. You can put them on your fingers, it hurts a little bit. Um, they're good for like, yeah, any bows or hair accessories. You can use them for ears, um, or just like any other reds for ears or horns, but they might slide around is the problem sometimes in the wig, especially with wigs that have hard tops, which is like, like this part of the wig, some wigs will have this part be fairly big. These techniques might not work on those kinds of wigs because you can't slide it into the wig because it's a solid thing. If, if you need to put it on the top of your head and you have a hard top wig, you're gonna have a lot of difficulty getting it to stay where you want it to be because it's not gonna be able to stick into the wig. Otherwise, if you're putting it in a place in the wig where there are like the holes where the wefts are, it's actually a lot easier to get it to stick in because you can also dig it in or like put it into your normal hair in the back and then it's got that extra layer of security. Um, if you do have something that you want to put on the top of your wig and your wig won't allow you to it because of the way it's constructed, honestly the best option here besides the headband is sewing it straight into the wig. And it offers more stability. It's not going to fall out unless you sew it in really badly. Um, this is really good for like big bows or ears that really you really want in a specific spot. I've sewn in cat ears and I've sewn in a bow before and honestly like it won't fall out. You don't have to worry about losing it. You don't have to worry about it breaking. Um, you might have to worry about like transporting it. It might be a little more difficult but usually it's not that big of a deal either. Um, or you can just glue it in but I probably wouldn't suggest that. I don't know why that's up there. Um, I don't know what you would glue. What have you glued it? Go ahead. Um, I did Grandma Toph from uh, Legend of Korra, and she's got that weird ass-shaped bun thing on the back of her head. So circular, it's ridiculous that you can't do with normal hair. So what I ended up doing was taking uh, a foam hemisphere and buying two of the same wig, like they were pretty cheap wigs gluing it to the hemisphere and then gluing that hemisphere onto the other wig, <laughs> just on the top, so that my head would still be able to get in the wig. Um, and I mean, it works! <laughs> it, doesn't, it didn't look the best, and uh, it was a cheap wig, so I've ended up now throwing it out and I have to redo it. But, I mean, it works. It Innovation at its finest. Does, it does the thing. And if you don't think any of these ways, if you have to add something in, and like none of these ways are gonna like work, just ask us, we can workshop it. I mean, there's bobby pins, there's other techniques, but like these are the main ones that are gonna probably work the best in the long run. And yeah. There's a will, there's a way. E. To make your wig look good. Oh boy, we're gonna oh, see if anybody else knows how to do it. 
Okay, so oh, now those, I do know how to do these. these. Yeah, it's One. kind of, it's very, okay, so you know those, uh, these stupid things that like, Taylor Moon has on her head. The more like, stupid balls. Full moon or something, full moon or something. Any character that has these stupid looking buns with other stuff sticking out. Um, what you do is you take a foam ball and you, some, sometimes you can get hollow hemisphere ones and sometimes you have to hollow out your own. Um, and what you do is you take wax and you like bind them up and you glue the ends so that they don't come undone or out of the ponytail that you put them into. You stick it through a hole that you made in this hemisphere and then you glue it around the outside back into the bigger opening and that bigger opening will be attached onto the actual wig like how Maddie did hers for, I think it's Luna, um, there. It's, it's a lot of work. It's not the most fun thing in the world, but it looks nice. <laughs> and if and it's there are tons of tutorials for this lesson, <laughs> so if you have, if you are cursed to make this or something like this, Art has also got a tutorial on like how to do it without making those. So yeah, that would be fun too. Well, I don't think okay, well, I can pretend like I know what this is. Okay, I know what it is, but I've never done it. and I It's don't. a lot more work than what it's worth. So, ventilation is when you want to add hair to a wig, specifically a lace front wig, which are the very expensive ones. It helps you craft like your own hairline, whatever you want it to look like. And basically what this person is doing is they get this little hooky thing and they get their, like, just their pieces of hair that they're putting in. And they're putting them in one at a time, like hooking them in. And it's a very, very long process. If you ever want to do it yourself, I applaud you. I will watch you cry about it. Like, you know, we'll have a cry session. It'll be great. And like, if you really need a specific hairline, that's going to be what you're going to have to do. Again, Google. Says, Google will help you. It takes a long time. It takes a very long, long time. Long but time. it looks great. If you do it right, if you do it right. <laughs> yeah. Toro! I just survived. I mean, they put eBay and Amazon, even though they said And AliExpress. I mean, any, like, art has <coughs> a lot of character specific tutorials as well, which are really useful. Um, cosplay tutorial, epic cosplay, Hello Fergie, are very, I think, from what I've seen, more general. They're not as like targeted towards a character or a specific style. Um, and then, this is why we kind of already talked about it already. So. Cosplayers love to make tutorials, so when you okay. type it on Google, you'll probably get a DeviantArt or a Tumblr or something, or a blog, you'll get something. You get a, you'll get a thing. Question. Does anyone have any questions? Our office hours, or message us on Facebook. Um, I don't have any questions that we can try and answer. It can be character specific too if you're like working on something or looking for something. No? Okay. Yay!